Hey guys, I thought I would come on here. I haven't been on here in a really long time, but I have a great book for us to go over tonight. It's called The What Ifs, and this is by Emily Kilgore, illustrated by Zoe Persico, and this is just a great new book about Cora and the what ifs. Um, she is worrying about everything. Because of this, the what ifs love her, and this is kind of what they look like. Cora was a very nervous girl, always jumpy, always on the edge, always wondering if something grim was going to happen. Because of this, the what ifs loved her. Heavy, lumpy, grumpy, the what-ifs are everywhere, in bright rooms, in dark corners, in busy hallways, rush, hushed libraries, in big cities and small towns. They slink in from unknown places and attach themselves to people when they least expect it. Then they whisper a question so quietly, so softly, so gently that the person doesn't know that the what-ifs are there at all. <clears throat> From the moment the sun first peeked through the window in the morning, Cora pulled, pulled a warm quilt over her head at night. She had the what ifs following her every single move. What if my dog runs away? What if I forget my homework? What if the sun, sun stops shining? What if my crayon breaks? Many people think about their what-ifs for a moment or two and then can briskly brush them off. Cora, though, could not. It didn't matter what if questions were silly or frightening, likely or impossible. As soon as she thought about them, they grabbed onto her. One week, Cora had what-ifs more than usual. She had a piano recital, recital just days away. Even though she practiced and perfected the song, the what if started creeping in. What if my fingers shake? Poor question on Monday. What if I make a mistake? She wondered on Tuesday. What if nobody comes? She asked on Wednesday. What if too many people come? She worried on Thursday. By the day of her recital, the weight of the what-ifs was just unbearable. She stood backstage ang anxiously awaiting her turn to perform. The longer she waited, the more what-ifs appeared, each grabbing hold of her and weighing her down more than the last. What if I trip on stage? What if the bench is too tall? What if the pedals are squeaky? What if I start coughing? What if I play the wrong note? What if nobody claps? She seems like she's really, really worried and upset. Look at all those what ifs. Cora, a small voice whispered, are you all right? Oh great, Cora thought. What if Stella thinks I'm a crybaby? What if she doesn't understand? It's nothing, was all Cora could mutter before a tiny sob escaped from her mouth. It doesn't sound like nothing, Stella said. Cora took a deep breath and said in a hushed voice, I, I, just, I just have too many what-ifs. To make me imagine bad things that could happen, like what if I mess up, or what if I sneeze during my song? Stella said, what if... Well, everybody gets what ifs, Cora. Just a minute ago, I asked myself, what if Cora's sad and I can help?
Listening to Stella, Cora started to wonder, what if she can help me? What if I can trust her? I wish mine were like that. My what-ifs are grim. Cora looked down. Do you ever have good what-ifs, Stella asked? I didn't know there were good ones, Cora whispered. Of course there are, Stella said. Like, what if there's chocolate cake after our recital? Or what if I play better than ever? Cora chimed in, peering at the boy pounding out notes on the piano. Cora suddenly felt her what-ifs begin to change. The heavy, lumpy, and grumpy what-ifs slowly sunk away while the new ones arrived in their place. Just then, the teacher announced it was Cora's turn. She walked to the piano without tripping. The bench was just the right height. Her hands quivered hovering over the keys, and then she sat down and began to play. All of a sudden, she hit the wrong note. Oh no, what if everybody laughs at me? What if I get booed off the stage? She just wanted to cry. She then tried to ignore the people staring, waiting for her next move, then out of the corner of her eye, she saw Stella. Looks like Stella was cheering her on. What if I can do this, she asked herself. She took a deep breath and started to play again with confidence. Her fingers danced across the keys. When she finished the room filled with applause, Cord took her bow and smiled at Stella. She couldn't help but wonder what if... I made a new friend today. So this book, this is a little bit about the author. And she states, when she was a young child, she was constantly weighed down by anxiety. She feared being away from her family. As she grew older, um, her fear and apprehension shifted. She battled anxiety through her life. She's worried about flying on airplanes. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, one in eight children are affected by anxiety disorders. Um, so the What Ifs is a good book. It can just help us remember we all have good and bad what ifs. And it's good for us to focus on the good ones. And it helps the bad ones go away. Um, so to find out more about this book, if you look up Emily Kilgore, the um, illustrator is Zoe Presco. She is a great illustrator of the what ifs. But here's a few pictures of some of the good ones. But I hope you guys are having a great week. I hope this is an encouragement to you to know that you can do things if you try, even if it's scary sometimes. We just have to give it a go and good things can happen.